you know when they say in the Bibles that if they say basically is um is a god and all and stuff like that. I like how do they know they've never really seen him, really? I haven't seen him, have you? Uh, well, the short answer is I don't know, uh, no one really does, but the uh, best information we have at the moment is some sort of big bang. Uh, why that happened, I don't know. Um, no one does. Is it even a scientific question? Uh, until I start again, a bit older, religion. But uh, as soon as I start again, older, then science started taking over and my whole outlook on things changed. Can a person follow God and follow science at the same time? So we're asking, is faith and science compatible? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, a lot of the leading scientists in the world today believe in God, and most of the greatest scientists from the past were believers in God. Now, I'm not a scientist myself, but I love science. I love reading about how this world came into being. I love cosmology. I love looking at images of this universe. I love it when they tell us that there's this planet, which they've called Canis Majoris, which roughly translated means the big dog. And uh, apparently it's so big, Hannah, that you could take uh, 70 quadrillion Earths and fit them into this big dog. It's like, if you imagine uh, 70 quadrillion cricket balls, if you can imagine that, that would be one big pile of cricket balls. Yeah. Uh, but imagine if each cricket ball was the size of this world, that would be pretty big, and then multiply it by 70 quadrillion, that's huge. And then they tell us that there are actually more stars and planets in our universe than there are grains of sand on all the beaches of this world. It just makes me think this universe is huge. And it also makes me feel pretty small in comparison. Oh, I know. I feel, I feel like the most little thing <laughs> ever now. Yeah. I feel like a grain of sand compared to all of that. Hmm. No, listen to this. This is a fact I heard. Yep. If I was to take this ballpoint pen, or any ballpoint pen, and I was to draw the, the smallest dot on my skin that I could, in that area, the size of the tiny dot on my skin, there are around 30,000 cells. Okay? Now... I'm no mathematician, you're not a scientist, and, but even I, no mathematician, can, can work out that if there are 30,000 cells in that tiny area, then, then there must be, what, trillions of cells in my entire body? And every single one of those trillions of cells is working like its own little factory. And the thing that makes the factory work is something called DNA. Mm. And now, DNA is amazing. It's like, uh, DNA is like a, a supercharged piece of complex, intelligent computer software mm. that generates how I work and how I look. And, and, and that's happening in every single one of our cells. Our bodies are amazing. They are. You know, the, the big question we have to ask, kind of, the, I guess the question, if you like, is, how did this universe come into being in the first place? How did we get here? And when I ask people that question, they often say to me, well, I'm a scientist, so I don't believe that God made this world. In fact, I can't believe because I'm a scientist. But what we believe about how this world came into being isn't a, a purely scientific matter. So you could be someone who believes in God and be a scientist, or you could be, be somebody who doesn't believe in God and be a scientist because none of us can actually prove it one way or another, because none of us were actually there when it happened. Not even you, Neil. Oh, that's funny, Hannah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you and I, basically, what we're saying then is that we have two choices. Yeah. Firstly, that God did create everything, that he made everything we see, or secondly, that there was a random big bang. Mm. And at this point, you're probably thinking, Hannah, if God made everything, as you say, then who made God? Mm. And that's a fair question, a question that I know I've definitely asked myself before. But now, when I think about how intricately detailed we all are and how incredibly complex we are, then I'm pretty happy accepting that if it was a God that thought about us and designed us and created us and made us, then he's probably big enough and great enough to have no beginning and to have no start. And 
And time is also something that we understand as humans, but God is beyond our understanding. He's far greater than that. And, and so I believe he's probably greater than time as well. And so even though we can't imagine it or understand it, I really believe that, that God would be eternal because he's, he's, he's great enough to be eternal. And then the other option we have then is that there was nothing, hmm. no space, no time, no matter. And then suddenly space and time and matter just begun and it all started. And, and then that space and time and matter that just appeared, this matter exploded and created everything that we have around us today. Now, all I would ask is, is that the most rational and most logical conclusion to come to? In other words, when, when you think about explosions, do explosions normally build things, put them together, create things? Or do they destroy things, pull them apart? And, you know, when you think about a bomb going off, bombs lead to destruction. So what I would say is that, um, if I put it another way, it's an old illustration. If I were to say to you, Hannah, that um, my watch came into being as a result of an explosion of metal and plastic and rubber in a factory somewhere in China, you would say to me, no, I don't think so. I could say back to you, um, well, how do you know you weren't there? And you could, say, you could say to me then, yeah, but that's not going to happen, is it, Neil? You know, as a result of an explosion, you're not going to get a load of watches suddenly being made. And I would, I would apply the same logic to this universe. You know, when you think about how uh, incredible, how much more amazing and detailed this universe is in comparison to this watch, then isn't it the most logical and rational conclusion to come to that actually behind it all is design and intelligence, a creator, God. Yeah, and so if there is this strong possibility that God does exist, that this creator exists, could it be then that the thing that we're all looking for or the satisfaction that we're all searching for in this life could it be that we'll find that in, in getting to know God himself? Could it be that this satisfaction would be found in getting to know the person that, that created us that, and that knows us and loves us more than anyone else possibly ever could? And what if one day you came face to face with God? What if one day you were standing before the creator of all of this? Would you be ready for that? And why did, why did Jesus die for us? Why did Jesus die for you? Mm -hmm. It makes you think, doesn't it? 